Hello everyone, welcome to the tutorial SVM part 5. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the IP core that we have generated from the Fittish HLS in the Vivado. Here I use the board RTZ7 from Digiland. So we will use the Zing processing system for process everything and control everything we run block uh, run block design here I will show you because in the high level synthesis we specify the period is 100 or the frequency is 10 10 megahertz and I will use also the peripheral of the LED for example here it will use the GPIO and then also with button it will also use the GPIO and here GPIO I will use the frequency of uh, 100 megahertz and otherwise uh, for the SVM IP core I will use the frequency of 10 megahertz so it has two different frequency here what we will do is uh, make the clock for pl fabric clock the first clock it's 100 megahertz and then we activate the second clock for 10 megahertz so there are two clocks here this is warnings no problem and then we can do run automation but here we need to exactly find the right clock for each IP core here make sure this is 100 and here we need to make sure this is everything uh, set to 10 megahertz this is actually uh, efficient if you just uh, use one x axis light uh, protocol here but here I use a 5 it's so inefficient but this is for just tutorial to show what is effect for uh, how to use this <coughs> all of this now we check the box and we click the OK and the FIFA do will arrange the connection for you click this to make the arrangements more clear here we you can uh, see that everything is uh, set into the correct peripheral there is a axi interconnect to make a uh, bridge from the zinc processing system into the IP core and here there are two processor system reset for 10 megahertz and 100 megahertz okay so this is done for SVM IP core but for the system SVM system we we will recognize the number 1 till 5 then we need to have the ADC for input microphone so <coughs> here we set the ADC single ADC XC LED protocol continuous uh, here the sampling right I will uh, set into 100 kilo sampling per sec and then okay a little bit default and then alarm we don't want to have alarm we leave it unchecked so it's very simple so here I want to set the 
the model of the microphone into the auxiliary one so basically uh, the IDC in the IDC in the FPGA in the Zing it's a dual pair so it has a negative and positive signal but here you we click right click and make external make external and we want to connect this into the actual signal in the RTZ7 so we need to have the constraint file file so we add the constraint file this is the xdc file uh, where I wait So this is RTZ720 master XDC. So we have constraint here and we will find the A0 for analog input. This is single ended analog input because in the board they have made uh, the single this they have yeah made for us the single ended protocol but here we need to specify the dual pair but actually in the electronics board uh, it's just a0 here a0 this is for two it's just a0 but here we need to uh, port this uh, negative and positive in auxiliary one into the actual this value. This is the negative, correct, and this is the positive, correct. And then we run automation, we select the 100 clock 100 megahertz clock okay we arrange now uh, after we acquisition the data from the IDC for microphone we need to do the signal processing which is the FFT so we use the fast Fourier transform here Here in the fast Fourier transform, we can open the IP core block to set up the configuration. The clock frequency we made it 100 megahertz, and the throughput throughput here. Oh no, still wait. Load. Okay. 100 also and then the architecture well, we said that that's automatic it's more easy for us and then this transformation length uh, we said uh, 16,000 so in the in one operation it will receive 16,000 blah 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 data then do the calculation and here the data format because our IP core it's uh, used the float point we will use the float point also here it will take uh, some time for loading basically actually yeah. 
Yeah, floating point is not so efficient, uh, but it's more easy for using this because our IP core is a floating point also. And here we do the check with for the asynchronous reset. And then the output order, we use the natural order. It will add up the computation time, but doesn't matter for us for more uh, speed you can choose the bit reverse order but in natural order the output is uh, in the actual natural order as we uh, set in the input okay fine here like the default okay this is enough and then for uh, doing the communication between between the FFT IP core and then with the Zing processor system we need to have the DMA or direct memory access okay we don't want to have scatter engine here the width of buffer length we make it more higher and here we set into uh, 64 why 64 because we use a float point floating point uh, it has uh, 32 bit and then in the FFT we will have the imaginary and real uh, numbers so the total is uh, 64 in the maximum burst size we make it uh, more higher here this is actually you can set it auto or change to 64 it doesn't matter it's auto it will adjust automatically we enable read channel and then uh, enable write channel because the communication is uh, from uh, for read the memory and then transfer it to FFT and then uh, from the FFT and write again to the memory and we allow online transfer here okay this is done and then we wire FFT into the DMA. Oops. Yep. And also here the in the FFT, uh, we need to have the signal for the config, especially for this uh, T data and then for the valid operation so we will have the automatically uh, operation so we need to have constant because t data here is 16 bit uh, we specify also 16 here and then one again for T valid constant because the number of bit is just one then it's just one okay we run automation oh wait uh, because we need to uh, have memory operation from the DMA so we need to enable something here here HP slave axi interface this is for the memory high performance slave we check for the memory access and run automation check all of them and then here we need to specify specific clock Run the 
automation again for this okay and this is it everything has been wired to the correct peripherals yes all of them has the clock and the reset oh no this still has not the clock and the reset so we need to wire this to this and then clock this to the clock then we do rearrange again and we validate our design okay the validation successful there are no errors great so we save control s for save and then don't forget after creating the block design here we need to uh, click here and do the create hdl wrapper basically it will create the hdl code from the block design but the code is a uh, preparatory so we cannot access this but everything here is uh, done and then we can after we we can do the synthesis implementation and generate bitstream after we generate bitstream uh, we can open the fitis ide to access the zinc processor system and with the access for all of the address for the IP core for SVM for the ADC for the DMA we can control all of the IP core inside the Zing with the code I will make the video tutorial for that in the next video but now I will generate the bitstream directly so it will automatically include the synthesis and implementations it will take so long time like 20 minutes uh, I will skip this and then see you in next tutorial video bye